This is the prize that's going to be given to someone who buys the corporate citizen playbook or the YouTube course. I will let you know who wins this the 1st of July. In this course, we're going to teach you how to make livable income from a small YouTube channel. Now, there's two ways to get into how to make a lot of money from a small YouTube channel. You can go direct to that course and it has a payment plan or you can get the Corporate Citizen Playbook, which gives you the power of persistence, the Corporate Citizen Playbook and how to make a lot of money from a small YouTube channel. See, here's the thing that people don't understand. There's, this is why so many people are unsuccessful. They think that they can do one little simple thing and make a lot of money, but the reality is it takes a system, it takes a process, and this is what you're going to get in these three courses. Now, one of the things, and I need to go ahead and say this, there is no discount for the payment plan. The discount only applies to the one and done, or you can get on the payment plan. And one of the things that's gonna happen is you're gonna learn how to build a business. You're gonna learn how to build a YouTube channel. You're gonna learn how to make money. You're gonna learn so much. And I know there are many of you who are just kind of waiting toward the end of the month when the price goes up. Do not wait. There's 20 hours of training. There's a lot of stuff that's going on. And if you want to go ahead and start working on your future, you will go ahead and enlist and enroll today because there's so much, there's so much, there's so many things you have to do. So the options to go ahead and get in the course are below and they're going to be in the description box and it will be in the comment section. So this is the things that you need to do so you can start building that life you dream of the building that life that you think about building that life that you want to build what's going on guys today is I gotta share some of my thoughts and opinions with you guys I was watching a video where they were talking about people being denied medical care if you have medical bills and you haven't paid them and you go to the hospital, I think this is due to technology. And if you have a bunch of outstanding balances, they will not treat you. And I was just sitting there and the, the whole tone of the video was like, they should treat you. And one expression, the medical industry can take the hit. And I, I just looked at that and I was like, Right now, um, I got some medical bills because, you know, I have to go get seen by my cardiologist and I have to go to my kidney guy. So I apparently owe maybe 200 bucks. But this is what I know. And I know this for a fact. If I was to get ill tonight and have to go to the hospital, I would be seen, I would be treated, and I would be helped. And this is where it's time to stop being a bum in America. You know how long you have to be, because essentially for you to have outstanding medical bills that you have not paid, you've got to have not paid these bills for months. I mean months. It's not like, they're gonna be able to go in there and look up. Now, I will say, with technology, and technology is a big driver of this, uh, I was um, seen by another doctor, and my kidney doctor, he knew who he was, and he was like, oh, he's outside the network. So, essentially with technology, if you're sick and you have to be seen, I think there's a mass record of everything that you got going on, which doctors you're seeing and all this other stuff. And I was just looking at this whole bill because I used to work in healthcare. And I can tell you that a lot of these hospitals are not for profit, even though they make money. And 
I was just like the whole tone was to help poor people. And, you know, I had a heart attack. My hospital bill was something like half a million dollars. And, you know, my insurance covered all of it, covered all of it. And this is the thing. This is the thing that just gets me. We have so many people who are looking for help, whatever situation they're in. And they don't want to stand up and be proactive. They don't want to do that because I, I, I've, I used to be, I used to work in healthcare. I know like, let's say you go to your doctor today and you see your doctor and your doctor spits out the bill. It will literally be months before that bill shows up in the repository. And I was just sitting there like, cause you know, this, this is, you know, there will not be any YouTube beefs, not mentioning any names, but I, I just saw this whole video and I was just, and I will say they have been getting in trouble on their YouTube channel. I wonder why. And this whole notion of not, you know, I'm a self-employed person, which means I have to have my own health insurance. I have to carry my own life insurance. And with that comes a lot of responsibility because, um, you know, as someone who's had a heart attack and fortunately it's been going pretty well, but I need to have health insurance. And if I want to be a self-employed person, I got to make sure that my health insurance came out of my checking account. I don't even know when I would have to look at my balance because, um, I have to make sure that I have money for my health insurance. I have to make sure that I have money for my life insurance. And I'll tell you, my health insurance and life insurance together is like 850 bucks a month. And, you know, I know where I fit. And, you know, typically I go see my doctors every four to six months, depending on what's going on. And, I'm just sitting there like, why do not, why don't people want to do the right things? Because everyone, everyone wants to be self-employed. Everyone wants to work from home. Everyone wants to do all this other stuff. But when it comes down to the brass tacks of being a responsible adult, that that's like, I, I don't want to be a responsible adult. And right now, I feel that we're on the, the brink of a recession. The, the thing with that is unemployment is still very low and the economy is adding a lot of jobs. But I, I do think that we're going to be moving toward recessionary um, measures. I would say fourth quarter, first, first quarter of next year. I think that's where we're gonna be. And we have all of these people out here who need help. And once again, I actually know people who are struggling. I personally know people who are struggling. And I'm gonna say something. I also know these people well enough to know the crisis points, the areas that they made some big mistakes. Because I know them personally. And one is really going through it, uh, really going through it. And there's like, once again, <sighs> I got love for you on the side, but I am not going to enter your, your battle. You know, cause I know people who to fix their problem would cost twenty to fifty thousand dollars, and I'm just sitting here like, and all the people I know, we're talking about half a million 
to aid them to get their lives back to being where they should be with no promise that they will not be revisiting these circumstances. And I'm just sitting there like, like I got love for people, but I have learned, I have learned, you know, cause there, there's many times in my life that I have um, opened up and I've given to people and I have learned that typically giving help to someone that you have seen you have evidence that this person has messed up. Typically is not the best route to take. It's just typically not. And I, I'm just sitting here cause I watched this video and I, I was just sitting there like, why is it so hard for people to be responsible? Um, that, that is one of the things cause it, it's, cause here's the thing and here, here's where we are. There's the reality of the world and there's the fantasy of the world. And the reality is the economy is going south. And what do you have to do? Like, I'll share some of the stuff with you. Like, um, I'm not taking on any undue debt. You know, if there's some of my business needs, if my business needs a program or some, there was some educational stuff I'm looking at buying, there's plenty of money in the business account for me to go ahead and pull and get business things. Um, but on a personal level, I haven't really bought anything. As my girlfriend says, it's, it's like, you never do anything for yourself. And I was like, it's kind of by design because, you know, I've just like, I have no personal debt, you know, the only reason on my credit report that it receives utilization 1% is because of the auto loan, because there's nothing on my personal credit cards. There's nothing. Uh, all my spend, and actually I went ahead and paid all of my business credit cards today, because that, that's typically what I do. It's like I pick one day and I just pay them all off. Boom, 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 boom. And you know, at the moment, I don't owe anything on my personal cards and I don't owe anything on my business credit cards. And I will say to uh, Ronnie, all things real, this is why we have credit. Cause he talks about this and he talks about it. Cause essentially this is having a lot of credit that you're not using and shout out to the credit plug. It takes a certain level of discipline to get, you know, cause between my personal credit in my business credit, I'm sitting at like 1.2 million. 500,000 on the personal credit, 750,000 on the business credit. And I just really started building business credit maybe two years ago. And I, I will tell you, over half of that is on American Express. And I was watching a video where someone said, because uh, there's videos out there saying American Express is closing down credit cards and I'm just sitting there like really and it's always I didn't do nothing they just picked me for some reason to shut down all my credit cards I'm going to tell you something that you don't know all of these credit card companies <clears throat> have changed their game right now I used a credit card from my personal account and I paid it off before the balance even hit my credit report. But on my Experian credit report, it has this entry, dominant credit card active. So what they're doing is they're reporting more than just your average usage. They're reporting when you use it, how you use it. Um, so credit card companies have highly accurate predictive analysis software really really accurate so I, like i've seen a lot of people talk about hey they're, they're shutting down my credit card I, I guarantee you i guarantee you and this ain't me trying to take the credit card side i'm just trying to give you some information give you some knowledge i guarantee you there's something in your spending pattern that has alarmed that credit card company 
There is something because this is one of the things that people don't understand. Credit card companies report a lot of stuff to the credit bureaus and they have what's it called predictive analysis. And this is, this is nothing new. Uh, Target has predictive analysis based on the things that you buy to predict what you will buy in the future. Their target, and this, this happened years and years ago, because this, this, just to give you an example, this was like a girl came in the Target and she bought some stuff. And what Target did is they sent to her house pregnancy, uh, some coupons for some pregnancy items. And her father, he lost his mind. He was like, he called up Target. Then he found out his daughter was pregnant. This is how strong the predictive analysis software was years ago. I can only imagine how strong it is today. And one of the things that you have to do is treat your credit like gold. You cannot be abusing your credit. You cannot just be doing stuff. And God forbid, you don't want to miss a payment. I mean, missing one payment can lower your credit score 100 and 150 points. One, just one payment. And I'm seeing right now, I have another video that's coming out talking about the repo crisis. You know, one of the things is now that we're out of the stimulus economy, no more enhanced unemployment, no more direct payments, no more PPP loans, no more EDIL loans. We're now in the real economy with a nasty, pesty inflation bug. Because, you know, I was doing some research and I read that the average American can no longer afford a house in America in most parts of the country. There's some parts of the country where their house is still selling for 150, two something. But these are places that people don't wanna live. But anywhere that people have a strong desire to live, housing is bananas. Uh, one of the things I've been looking at and in my neighborhood in Atlanta, I am literally seeing million dollar houses, 1.3 to $4 million come on Zillow and be sold in a week, be sold in a week. And some of these houses, they, ne they didn't even do a discount on them pricing, but these were really, really nice houses. And what I have also seen on Zillow is normal, regular houses sit on Zillow for a long time. I think that is just the upscale market is just doing what the upscale market's going to do. But here's the thing, and this is the message that I want to get out to you guys. What I understand based upon economic data is that we are about to go through a very hard period of time and when I say hard period, I'm not talking about for a few months. I'm talking about for years. It literally took the housing market 10 years to come back after the crash to really, really, you know, 2007, yeah, about 2017 is when the housing market started really, really coming back. And, you know, I I'll share some other stuff with you. Uh, I bought, I have two brokerage accounts. Remember when I was talking about I was going to start trading and I never did. And I, I brought some brokerage accounts and I just bought a dividend stock, thousand dollars. And I bought a thousand dollars worth of Apple just to see how that market works. Cause you know, I don't even check on them. Like my Apple stock is up. If I had bought, cause I only bought a thousand bucks, but if I had bought $10,000, I would be up $200. If I had bought $100,000 of Apple stock, I would be up $2,000. And I've been holding on to this stuff, I would say almost a year. And, you know, I do this 
so I can be educated because, you know, if I'm going to mention something about stocks, I need to have a brokerage account. I need to be invested in the market. I need to know what's going on in the market. So I can say this from a factual standpoint that the stock market is a very slow way to get wealthy. It's a very slow way because if I had bought a hundred thousand, I would be up $2,000. If I bought a million, I would be up $20,000. And I think I've held on to this six months, I would say eight or nine months. And you know, one of the things to do that I'm doing to become more educated about certain things is I'm actually participating. And you know, one of the things that is happening right now is everyone is looking for the lottery ticket uncle. This person that's gonna come in and save the day. And I can tell you, there's a lot of people, there's no lottery ticket uncle in their life. There's not any, I mean, I have one person that I know who is literally going through it. And this person finally did something smart. They actually got another job. Because he, here's the thing, when you're going through it and life is just knocking you upside your head and I'm gonna say something, there's only a handful of people who are gonna care about what you're going through. Few friends, if you got four friends who actually care on a deeper level or that you're going through something bad, consider yourself fortunate. Because there's a lot of people out there that have no one. And going back to this healthcare issue, um, I was just watching that video, because like I said, uh, they, they've been getting in a little trouble because they've been putting out, because controversy is a mover on YouTube. Negative content is a mover on YouTube. And you got to understand, and this is something I talk about in my YouTube training. YouTube is very much becoming like Disneyland. When I had my disruptive male channel, I would put up certain thumbnails and the women had clothes on, but they were just too suggestive for YouTube and YouTube would remove my thumbnails. I would like, and th this thing, YouTube don't even tell you. It's just like, you're looking at the video and it's like, where's the thumbnail? They will just move it. Just, hey, we don't like that thumbnail, it's gone. And, you know, as someone who's never been demonetized, and so, because th there's a certain way you have to move on YouTube, there's a certain way, because you can get a little bit too outrageous and you can lose monetizations. Uh, there was a guy who was speaking ill and he had to really say something really reckless because there are people who's like say, I don't disagree with Dave Ramsey and their videos are monetized and they're just fine. He had to really, really go in. And one of the things, and that person did not post videos for like 10 months because essentially, you know, one of the things that is happening is that people are not realistic. Like right now, the number of people, Etsy sellers, Etsy has grown by like 500,000 sellers this year. From the beginning of the year until now, it has grown 500,000 sellers. I'm gonna tell you why. And this, this is about, we gotta stop being bums. So many people feel that they can go to the internet and pretend this is chat GPT, right? And this is mid journey, right? They can go to the internet and use these two devices, these two internet protocols, make some simple, something extremely simple. Because one of the things that I'm seeing is that people are coming on YouTube and saying, hey, I'm on Etsy and I've not had any sales or my first 30 days of Etsy, I've sold $80 worth of stuff, $80. And <clears throat> this right here is gonna be one of the most, the harshest things I got to say. 
You are never going to solve complicated problems with simple solutions. And if you have a solution where you need money, hear me, you need to take yourself to work. If you got one job and your one job is a struggle, you can't save any money, you find yourself broke, guess what you need to do? You need to go find another job. And I'm gonna tell you why I do not suggest that you start a business. All right. When you're like broke, broke, uh, I'm not even gonna use those. When you're like broke, you have no money, no money. Guess what, 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 where you are? You have entered the realm of being untrustworthy. And this is one of the things that I'm seeing with a large percentage of the side hustle content on YouTube. Side hustle content is huge. Uh, literally, I've seen, um, they had put out, they made $750,000 for putting out side hustle content. And here's the thing, the overwhelming majority of side hustles are not going to work to make you what I called a living wage. Now, let's say we can do like my dividend um, portfolio thing. I think I made like 20, I think I made 20 bucks. So I have some dividend stock. It's actually performing. It's made me some money. But has it made me livable money? And th this is one of the things that people are starting to comment on YouTube about these side hustles. It's like, there ain't no real money. Uh, people are starting to wake up. People are starting to take stock. And the majority of these side, like there's this guy who's doing a bunch of videos about Etsy. And he's talking about how the majority of folks on Etsy are not making sales. The majority of people who watch side hustle videos, and I'm gonna explain what they're watching and what they hope for. And there was um, CNBC that used to do, uh, these articles have disappeared because they were like at one point rampant. Hey, my side hustle, I only work two hours a day. I make 40,000 a month. Those articles are gone. They were like, they were heavy, heavy, heavy in my Google feed. They just have literally disappeared. And this is what people are looking for. They're looking for a side hustle that doesn't take a lot of time that can make them five, 10, $20,000 a month. And this is why people are predicated on these side hustles because they're looking to make more money from their side hustle working less than they, the 160 hours a month they put at their job. Or maybe you got some people out there who are working 200 hours of work. They have a full-time job, they have a part-time job. And this is the dream of the people who are reading these side hustles. It's like, if I can find a side hustle, something that I can do at home. And today I found a lucrative side hustle, but here's the thing. You can't do it, it like, um, I'll, I'll actually tell you what it is. It's um, creating user-generated content for blogs and stuff where you give them the things that they need. And the girl who created the course, she said, to set up one, it's gonna take three to four hours. So if you got two setups per day, you have an eight hour day. And this is why I believe that it works because it's nothing that you can sprinkle a little hustle dust on, like, ah, hustle dust, hustle dust. You actually gotta work. And you know, uh, one of the things that generated a student of her, she took her course, she made $4,000 the next month. And with you having to do, and she gave out the explicit, she said, you know, it'll take you three to four hours to create a 300 to $400 setup. So this girl, she had 10 setups. 10 setups and 10 times four is about 40 hours. So 
I would say with the preparation and stuff, she probably spent 80. And to make $4,000 a month for only working 80 hours is pretty good. Pretty good. You got some folks out there who are busting it, who are working 40 hours a week, who will not make $4,000 gross income before taxes. So this was something, because you know, the girl, because you, you gotta do work. You gotta do work. And this, this is the thing that I, I see in so many people that there was this guy running these ads talking about you had to invest in his business. And if you invested X amount, you can make four to $10,000 per month. The only thing you had to do was just keep re-upping your investment every month to get this passive income. And I haven't, like, he was running his ads really hot and heavy at one point, but I haven't seen them. I'm not sure if they're still running. But, man, if you're going to be a bum, if you're not going to do the things you need to do, 2024, 2025, 2026, 2027, are going to be some really difficult years for you. And this is what's funny. I am better off than the majority of the people who watch my videos. I can say that. I can assure that. And I'm out here working eight hours a day. I've got money in the bank. I've got really good credit. I got, I got excellent credit. I got the kind of credit that if I needed to, I can live off my credit. I can use $250,000 and that's going to leave me with a million I can actually live off my credit. That's how good my credit is. And I got cash money in the bank. And right now, there are people who are nowhere near that, sitting at home, being bums, wondering when their rich Uncle Larry is gonna come save them. And this is one of the things I know. I fell. I went from living in a house with a family to living in a boarding room, a room in a boarding house for not one, not two, but three years. So that memory is the reason that I do the things I do because, you know, would I actually just go back to that situation if I stopped working? Probably not. But you know what? I ain't taking no chances. I am not going back to no boarding house. I am like, like this is my goal. My goal is I'm 77, I'm driving a, a new Porsche, living in a multi-million dollar house. That's 21 years in the future. And for me to have that future, I gotta do the work today for me to have that future. And a lot of people don't understand that. So it's really, really time for people to dig in. It's time for people to take, pay attention because I feel this neck economic hardship is going to be quite dark and it's going to be lengthy. And I'm just saying, man, if you do not prep yourself and get yourself correct, whew, time's about to be hard. Times are about to be hard. And when I see these YouTube reporters talking about Healthcare, they can take that hit. That right there, 100% is the wrong attitude. The wrong attitude. When I go see my doctors and I get my bills that I gotta pay these doctors, you know what I do? Pull up my credit card, go online and pay the bill. And that's why, you know, I, like I said, even if I did not pay my medical bills, it would literally take months for me to get in a situation where I would not be seen. But I want you to think about that. If you just let your medical bills go unpaid, because that's what, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about someone in my position who literally has to pay some medical bills. I just got my medical bill the other day and I just paid my credit cards off and this is a strategy. I want to pay my credit cards off and when the money comes out of my bank, then I'm going to go ahead and pay my medical bill.
because that's going to be on the new billing cycle. That's the only thing I'm waiting on. That's the only thing I'm waiting on. And then I will pay them and I'll be good. And I just got those medical bills. I just got them. Just got them. They just rolled in. So if tonight something funky happened and I had to go to the emergency room, I would be seen. I would be treated. I would get all the treatment and stuff that I need. I would. But once again, it's time for a lot of people to stop being bums. Because you, you're going to be a bum. You're going to act like a bum. Guess what? You're going to get that bum treatment. And that bum treatment ain't going to be nice. It is not going to be nice. All right. So for those folks who want to take action and get activated, commercial was at the beginning of this video. That's right. We're giving away the X5. That's a solid. I'm going to do that the 1st of July. Someone in my course is going to get an X5 and I'm going to actually ship it to them. If they're in the lower 48, if they're like overseas or something, you got to pay that if you want it. And I'll just go ahead and find someone else to give it to. But a lot of things are going down inside the YouTube course for the people who want to be active, for the people who are ready to rise to that level. A lot of stuff is going in the YouTube course. Uh, there's going to be more content to the corporate citizen course. There's a lot of things that are going to go down in June. And uh, I would not be surprised if I have to extend this stuff to July. Wouldn't surprise me at all. So once again, let me just say this. You don't get a discount for the payment plan. And once again, since we're talking about stop being bums, where can you go somewhere, pay over time and get a discount? Let me know where, where you can do that, because typically if you pay over time, you actually pay more money. I mean, you're grown folks. You've been through this. You know this. For some reason, people expect me to be Santa Claus. Shaking the Santa, shaking the jingle bells and stuff. I don't know. But once again, for the people who go ahead and take advantage of the massive discount, because let, let me explain something to you. Let's say you go ahead and get my corporate uh, citizen playbook. You go ahead and buy that. And then in the next year, that helps you generate $20,000. You're $18,000 to the good. You're $18,000 to the good. So the price is ridiculously cheap right now. And I'm, I'm about to say something. It's not always going to be that price. And there are going to be people in December who are going to see these videos. They're going to be pissed off. They're going to be mad. And it's like, I should have got in back then. I guarantee it, guarantee it. So if you don't want to be one of those people, go below, get in right now, and I will see you in the next video. My name is Glendon Cameron. The access to the courses is in the comments and it's in the description box. I will see you guys in the next one.